Why is it I keep seeing the same two underrated cheat sticks pop up in Tor Pro's golf bags? And the best bit is, they're not even that expensive anymore. Core, this thing is easy to hit. Go on, 260 yards, why not? And to be honest, it's virtually the same length as an old school five wood. Let me share with you what this does so well compared to every other club on the market. However, the two clubs that I'm about to show you are very different from one another. And very rarely would you see them in the same bag. But what is a cheat stick? How do you know which one's going to suit you? And what qualifies it to give it the cheat stick status in the first place? A cheat stick is essentially a club that gives you the utmost confidence when you stand over it. It has the perfect balance of distance and dispersion, and that club can change for every golfer out there. For example, I hit that pretty poorly, open club face, but a tremendous amount of backspin, still giving me two, four, five, that's not gonna leave me too much left into most par fours. For some of you, it might be your six iron off the tee, because with its relatively short length, you feel you have control, and because you don't struggle for club head speed, it's still going to give you quite a decent amount of distance. But as soon as you go to the lower lofted options in the set, yes, on a good one, when the stars align, it's going to give you another 20, 30 yards. But the bad shots are so destructive, the reward isn't worth the risk. On the flip side, some of you will have an extremely old fairway wood. You don't swing it incredibly fast. However, for whatever reason, when you stand over this thing, you find the middle more often than not, the club face is somewhat pointing towards the target, and you're even better off hitting it in most cases, opposed to your driver. There's two reasons why this is, and for two very different golfers, and the two cheat sticks that I'm about to show you are relatively affordable and potentially be a good upgrade from either of these options. Let's start with the world number one's choice when it comes to cheat stick, and then talk about the gimmick Callaway option, which when it first came out at 300 pounds, I thought it was gonna be a complete flop, but considering that's in so many tall pros golf bags, well, I've obviously been proved wrong. Scotty Scheffler doesn't just have one of these driving irons in the bag, he has two of them. That couldn't be a worse strike if I tried. Still gone 220. Still only 20 yards offline as well. That's more like it. And he's not the only one. There's so many pros, as I'll show you, with this driving iron in the bag. And it's pretty old, which means a pretty good price. Now, sadly, I don't have my old ZU85 driving iron because I'm stupid. And you would have thought I would have learned by now that if it works, don't change it. However, this is the first time of me trying the Srixen Mark II ZX driving iron, and I've got a few points to obviously pick out with it. This at a dress as I stand over it, I kind of see a bit more of the back than I can remember when it came to my old Srixen ZU85. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure Srixen would be able to tell me all the technology that's gone into this, the stats, the performance, why this one will do better. But this is a psychological game. This is about confidence. Looks plays a big part. And for me, having a club that didn't look like, well, basically a hybrid when I'm addressing it, yet having all the forgiving chunkiness basically under the hood, is well one of the reasons why I loved it so much. I'll show you a picture of the old one up close, how it's just basically caved out the back of it. And again, potentially putting the CG even lower on the club, and I'm not gonna get too technical, but there must be a good reason why so many tour pros that aren't even sponsored by Swixen are using this same old driving iron in the same slot and potentially one of the reasons why I love that one so much as well. But a cheat stick is more than stats, it's more than numbers. It's that club when you've got three blokes behind you or you've just played through a group, you've got to get it down the middle of the fairway 200 plus yards, and it's that one club that even on the bad shot, you're gonna be somewhat in play. And that length helps me control the club face. Not only that, find the middle of the club face more. But let me give you a quick rundown for those players that do swing quite fast, how to build your own driving iron that's gonna work for you. If you swing your seven iron around 90 miles an hour, 
A driving iron would make sense. 205 carry, 220 yards. And bearing in mind, if you swing your seven iron at 90 miles an hour, you'd probably swing this at like 94. Anything lower than 94, 91 miles an hour with this club, you're better off with my second option. Number two is that you flush the ball pretty well, but direction's your problem. Again, for me, strike's never really been an issue. Mainly because I've been doing this for so long. However, shot direction definitely is. And the reason I say that is, yes, it's chunky, yes, it's big, but it's nowhere near as forgiving as, well, let's be honest, a fairway wood. The bigger the head, the further the back, the less it's gonna twist and open and impact. And lastly, if you're like me and you hit that shot out to the left-hand side, Get something X stiff, get something heavy, get something that doesn't want to release on the way down. If you do leak the ball out to the right hand side, get something light, get something graphite, potentially go regular flex with this, even in a four or a three, because it'll want to turn. It will have that high torque that closes the face and stops those shots leaking out to the right hand side. And for most of us that are playing courses that are six three, six four, six five. 220 yards is perfect. It leaves you 130, 140 into the green. The whole point is that we get it down the middle and then we start practicing our 130, 140, 120 yard approach shots. So on average, your scores actually start coming down. So let's talk about the one club Callaway makes that no other brand does. Core, this thing is easy to hit. Now you're probably thinking from the last one going, I haven't got speed, I haven't got strike, I haven't got club face control, I haven't got a good swing path. Well, luckily, I do think this is gonna be a bit of an all-rounder and why the pros, even not sponsored by Callaway, have put this in the bag. The 2021 Apex Utility Word, and let me share with you what this does so well compared to every other club on the market. Because it retailed at 300 pounds and the new version retails around 320 pounds, and we'll talk about why I haven't seen many of those in pros bags just yet, I think I have a bit of leeway of why I doubted this club. I was just thinking that's just an expensive hybrid. And obviously I'll share the prices at these retail at the moment because it's quite surprising. But I wanna go back to that golfer that loves their old school fairway wood on the right hand side, 20 pounds, probably five pounds at the car boot. The Apex Utility Wood on the left hand side. Doesn't seem that new now, does it? And I see this all too often. You have to remember there is always a trade-off in golf. You want more distance without changing your club head speed. All you're doing is tweaking the launch and spin numbers. And with the older clubs, they used to spin more. That's why manufacturers were able to gain so much distance in that 10, 15 yard period. They kept lowering the spin, making the heads bigger, but then also deeper as well. So then if you do hit it high up the face, it's going to launch high, spin low, all that kind of good stuff. But as I mentioned with the driving iron, this backspin helps. Look, I put 800 side spin on that. That's quite a lot. Yeah, I'm only 30 yards offline, not to mention I've got a decent descent angle. That arguably is too much for me, but for someone that swings it lower, no wonder you can get your old 20 pound club up in the air and pretty straight quite often. Not to mention this utility wood is an inch and a quarter shorter than the standard Callaway fairway woods at the moment. And to be honest, it's virtually the same length as an old school five wood. And whether you're going with this or the driving iron, depending on how fast you swing the club, shorter length and shaft helps you find the middle more. It also, for me, helps us actually control this club face. There's no wonder why so many of you love a five wood hybrid, but with the driver, club face open, ball massively right. There she is. Go on, 260 yards, why not? Take the driver out, mate. Just use this now, 178 yards. Not too shabby. Unlike the driving iron, it's quite easy for me to recommend to those players that swing quite fast. This is quite a lot more versatile because some of the fastest players in the world are using it. But if you love your hybrid and hate your fairway woods, but you just need a bit more height, a bit more spin, potentially this is a good option. If you want a versatile club that's gonna get you out of the rough, you can't get your fairway wood in the rough and hit down on it. Well, the shorter length and shaft and potentially quite wide heel to toe, a lot wider than most hybrids and very shallow, again, is gonna help for that kind of strike. Can't believe I'm about to say this, but if you have that club that is your trusty five wood 
and you're looking for an upgrade, this is potentially the best alternative in my eyes, opposed to a modern day five wood or a modern day three wood. However, I'd also lean on the fence of saying, why are you changing it? Guys, I hope you like this video. Any questions, sasgolfacademy.com and I'll catch you guys later.